Uh, to Todd's immediate left is Don Rozier. Don is actually uh, Todd's, uh, he's, his, he's his partner in, de in decorum. Um, his background is that he was a county commissioner. Uh, he is a civil engineer by training. Uh, he has been, as a county commissioner, he's been involved in a number of local regulatory issues. Uh, he is currently involved in a real estate development here in Denver. Um, and his, he is going to talk today about jurisdictional issues with respect to the cannabis industry. As you all know, um, Jeff Sessions has recently overturned the famous memo, which made clear that, there were, that the federal government, for which cannabis is still a, a Schedule I uh, 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 narcotic uh, or, not, or, or drug, um, basically overturned the memorandum and basically said that we will not interfere with states. He has removed that, so it has introduced a level of uncertainty. So Don is going to speak to the level of uncertainty that is introduced between the federal, state, and even the local level. So I was <laughs> born and raised in Jefferson County. Um, I am a registered professional engineer. My specialty is water resources, river morphology, sediment transport. So I'm really concerned with um, availability like we all are here in Colorado with water and making sure that we have safe, good drinking um, water to consume. I am a two-term Jefferson County Commissioner. I served those terms in, uh, I was elected in 2010 and then re-elected again in uh, 2016, actually 2014. I uh, have been a business owner for many years uh, here in Jefferson County um, or here in Colorado in Jefferson County and I've had an opportunity to go around the world um, as an engineer and as a uh, business professional. Real quick, let's talk about Amendment 64. What, is, what did it mean to the state and county government and then also city government? With the passage of Amendment 64, most of the rulemaking, as you all know, got pushed down from the state level to the county and then to the city levels. So I was an acting county commissioner at the time. We were asked, do you want to have retail marijuana sales within the county. And we could have made the decision as a county commissioners, or we could have taken it out to a vote of everyone within the county. And depending on how we voted, up or down, then within the unincorporated areas of Jefferson County, we could see dispensaries be established. The cities also then had an opportunities within counties to do the same vote. So if Jefferson County voted no, we did not want retail sales of, of marijuana, then each individual city could vote up or down on such an action. So we saw in Arvada, Arvada says zero retail sales of marijuana. Lakewood took a different approach. They have medical marijuana. Same thing, Wheat Ridge. You look at Edgewater, Edgewater voted yes for medical and for retail sales. It has made a huge difference in Edgewater. So I don't know if many of you know where Edgewater is. It's right on the eastern boundary of Jefferson County, right before you get into Denver County. And Edgewater was struggling, struggling pretty bad. St. Anthony's Hospital had recently moved to their new location within Lakewood, and they had lost a lot of business um, that would go from that would go from the hospital over to and go into uh, their retail stores along the um, Sheridan corridor. They didn't know how they were going to survive. With the legalization of marijuana, that city is booming. They have actually had an opportunity to pave every street within their city redo um, their water infrastructure and their sewer infrastructure and now they're building a brand new city hall now i say that with a little bit of a caveat because there are many counties and many cities who viewed retail marijuana as a saving grace and they're going to tax the heck out of it what happens when you see excise tax ex after excise tax after excise tax it creates a black market mm -hmm. he goes right into that so we saw many cities and many counties look at it as that that saving grace and it's not it's a part of the process it should not be relied on we see that even at the state government level 
where they say, we need more road, road money. We need school money. We need this money. We, where are we going to get it? Number one thing that comes up, I'll just increase the taxes on marijuana. Right? And it just puts it back into that gray market. We cannot keep going in that direction. We have to look at it holistically. We need to look at it as a business. One item, when I sat as a county commissioner, we had a steering committee that we set up on retail sales of marijuana. We did not jump into the game. We did not make a decision immediately. And let me tell you why. Because we wanted to see and understand. I wanted to understand the pros and the cons. I, want to under, I wanted to understand the market. I did not want a business to come in to invest millions of dollars for a decision to be made and then they were out their dollars immediately. It was going to be a smart decision. It was going to be an educated decision. Plus, to be quite honest with you, I wanted to see all the mistakes sitting county of Denver was making. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, it's videotaped. I better be careful. Mm -hmm. I love you, Mayor. Uh, <laughs> there, there were many, and uh, there still continues to be different mistakes. But what I'm getting at here is when you look at how regulations occurred, just because it happens a certain way in Edgewater or Wheat Ridge or Denver or Aurora, it's different every time a business tries to locate within those areas. And it's very restrictive, and it still creates that market for the black market to come in. And making sure that we go in the right direction, making sure that we get a policy in place, I guess, a better way to look at it, with marijuana and with hemp, and how we deal with it. I'm also a big supporter of, of the hemp industry. I have some stepbrothers who are farmers, and hemp is a great crop for them, especially in Colorado because the use of water, something else that's near and dear to my heart. When you look at the extra, what you can do with hemp from the fiber to the seeds to CBD oil are amazing. So we're going to see a hemp industry here. It's lagging behind the marijuana industry. You're going to see a hemp industry that is poised to be huge throughout the nation. Um, I'm going to leave it there. I'm sure there's a lot of questions that are all going to Todd, as he mentioned. <laughs> Todd will answer them all. But um, I'm going to pass it on. Thank you. I'll let you answer.